Okay, well, welcome to um, Module 4, Lesson 3, Comparing Quantities with Percent. Okay, so we're going to compare different quantities with percent, um, the beginning of um, more or less um, a three-part um, three part series where we talk about um, comparing different quantities with percent. Okay, so um, before we go ahead and do that, we... Um, I'm not sure what that little random line is, but before we do that, um, there is an important uh, point to consider. Um, and let's start off with this. This is our um, percent formula that we've been talking about, we've been using in, la in the prior two um, lessons. And that is part equals percent times whole. Okay, part equals percent times whole. Now, while that seems pretty clear, and um, I mean, in a sense it is, um, there is a bit of a problem, and the problem um, comes up when the part um, sometimes is greater than the whole in a percent problem, okay? So here's, here's what happens, okay? So if we want to find out 115% of 100, if we do that, um, because sometimes we do talk about more than 100%. Um, if we talk about 115% of 100, then that part is actually going to equal 115. Okay, so in this case, we here we have a part that is greater than the whole, okay, from which it came, but it's not truly from which it came. Therefore, we're going to need, because this is, this is, oh, I just did this already. Okay, that was from before. <laughs> Sorry. This is, uh, this seems strange. Okay, and it can seem very, very strange. Therefore, um, we are going to um, rephrase this percent formula, and we're just going to simply say quantity equals percent times whole. Therefore, we can um, not be as um, um, mystified as to how a part can be greater than the whole from which it came. Okay, because we're going to be using... Um, Again, we're going to be using percentages that, that are greater than 100% sometimes, okay? Very often, <clears throat> and in life very often, you talk about, <clears throat> for example, investments. Um, when your mom and dad or you eventually are going to make investments in your life, um, you know, you're going to talk about um, percentages that are greater than 100 because um, you want your money to grow, um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, we're going to get used to this now, and let's just go ahead and um, just pay attention to our new formula. Okay. Here we go. So here is our opening exercise. All right, and we'll just uh, get right to it. Um, if each 10 by 10 unit... Oopsie daisy. If each... We've got to get past this. Here we go. Boom, boom. Sorry. Nope. There we go. Okay, so... If each 10 by 10 unit square represents one whole, okay, which it often does because there are uh, 100 squares in each of those, okay, then what percent is represented by the shaded region? And um, <clears throat> I had a little trouble with it, not, not trouble necessarily, but I kind of misread this one before because I was thinking of looking at both of those um, separately, okay, which, is, which you can, I mean, because I can look at here and I can say this is 100%. Okay, because all of these are filled in, okay, 10 by 10. And this one here is 10, 20. There's 25 squares filled in, so that's 25%. So in truth, altogether, this is going to be 125%. Okay, so the, the shaded region, and that's the entire shaded region on this page here, is 125%. You know, because we're looking at, and again, uh, I hope this doesn't confuse you because we're looking at each one of these whole 10 by 10 units is is a whole, okay? So if we were to write this as a fraction, that would be 1 and 25 hundredths, okay? Because this right here, this part is, you know, 25 out of 100, and this part is 100 out of 100 over here, okay? So 100 out of 100 and 25 out of 100, okay, it's actually shaded there, okay, so this 125, 1 and 25 hundredths, of course, is going to be 1.25 or 125%, okay, so 
don't let this confuse you because it's not truly, and again, some people might have looked at it as maybe 125 over 200 because there are 200 blocks or 200 squares in each one, but that's not the case, okay, because we're saying that um, the very important point is this, each, each one of these 10 by 10 um, unit squares represents one whole, okay, so we have one whole, Okay, that's that, and then we have 25 hundredths there, okay? All right, so just to clear that up, and hopefully that doesn't become, a, become an issue any, any longer um, throughout this lesson, okay? So now, <clears throat> in the model above, they are telling us that, um, so let me clean up a little bit here, that 25% here is equal to 10 students, okay? To 10 students. All right, let's say that here. All right, so why don't you try to figure this out? Just look at this, come on back and tell me, how many students does the entire shaded region represent then? If, you know, 25% represents 10 students, this whole shaded region up here, now both, both of these, how many students are represented there? Go ahead and give that a whirl and come on back. Okay, so if each 25 squares, or 25% up here, equals 10 students. I mean, this part right here, this shaded area, equals 10 students, okay? So we could ask ourselves, how many groups of 25 are in this, um, on this, uh, this square over here, okay? And I don't think I did that right there. I think I, one, two, three, four, I went over, over too far there, one, two, three, four, five, like that, okay? So here's one, one group of 25, and we can figure that out because we know that 100 has four groups of 25. So <clears throat> if there are four, we have four groups of 25 here. There's another group of 25, and let's see, is that right, 25, and then we have one here, right, one, two, three, four, five, right there, right there, there's another group of 25, and then we have a final group of 25, is that right? I'm not sure, I made a little bit of a mess of that. Oh yeah, that's right, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. 25, because this little area here is not... Okay, so yeah, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 25, so each one of those is 10. So that's another 40 students are represented there. So we have a total of 50 students, okay? Because they're saying if 25% equals 10 students, how many does 125% represent, okay? Okay, and here we go. Here's example one. And um, I hope you understood that um, this opening exercise somewhat. We'll get back to things like that if that didn't um, look understandable to you. Um, but here we go. So the members of a club are making friendship bracelets to sell to raise money. Anna and Emily made 54 bracelets over the weekend. They need to produce 300 bracelets by the end of the week. What percent of the bracelets were they able to produce over the weekend? Okay, so they made 54 over the weekend. Okay, but they need to produce 300. Okay. So what percent of the bracelets, what percent, what percent of the total um, were they able to produce over the weekend? So uh, take a look at that, see what you can do with it, and uh, come on back and check in with me. Okay, so we're going to, um, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and solve this a few ways. Uh, first, our, our visual way, it's kind of nice to look at it, look at it as a visual representation. Um, start getting an idea of what might be a reasonable answer, okay? So when we look at it first, okay, let's go ahead and draw our two lines, uh, one on top of the other. One is going to be our percentage line, and one is going to be our uh, quantity line, okay? Because we are, and you can see which one is which here. All right, percentage line on top, quantity line on the bottom. And um, the way we map it out right now is 54, okay? So 54 is represented right about there. Um, this is about, probably about halfway here, so that's about 150 bracelets, and that's about 50%, okay, so we look at 50% right about there, okay, 
we know we are down here if we split it again this this whole section here in half that would be about 25 percent okay so I'm just trying to get a visual of what my <clears throat> mystery percentage is going to be so you can see 54 is right about right about there so it's going to be less than 25 percent um, so I get an idea of what it what it what it's going to um, what it's going to be okay just get rid of all those but the way I can look at it though if I want to go ahead and then um, figure this out quantify this I could just look at those two numbers 54 and 300 because 54 represents the part and then 300 represents the whole so I can go ahead and say 54 over 300 is equal to x over 100 okay because these are going to be the same so 50, 54's relationship to 300 is going to be the same as x's relationship to 100 and of course I use 100 because I am trying to find um, 100 as my denominator because I'm trying to find a percent okay so if I go ahead and do that I can see that 300 divided by 3 is 100 so that's that relationship therefore I need to do the same up top and if I do that 54 divided by 3 I get 18 so 18, 54 over 300 is the same as 18 over 100 which of course is 18 percent okay so that's a little bit of, you know, arithmetical um, a little bit visual okay just to get a sense of where we're at so um, you know you don't end up with some number that um, some percentage that is obviously uh, incorrect okay so let's get rid of all that and so next we can use our percent formula okay which uh, now has been rewritten as quantity equals percent times whole so if we start plugging those things in we know we have a quantity of 54 okay that's our quantity our percent is our question mark so let's just write that as p use the variable p and then 300 is our whole okay 300 is our whole and we didn't really talk about it before but we know it's our whole because um, they you know the idea is they need to produce 300 okay that is the whole that is their goal okay okay <clears throat> so what I want let's go back to that because I just wanted to just show you that so we have something here that says P times 300 now in algebra we want to be very very strict if we have something like that if we are solving for a variable like the P right here we want to rewrite it and make it look like that okay because P times 300 is the same as 300 P because 300 and P right next to each other um, that says multiplication okay so again rewriting um, things uh, rewriting these equations so they uh, we could more easily work them out okay so again what I need to do of course I'm going to um, <clears throat> isolate my P okay and the way to isolate my one P is to um, multiply it by the uh, multiplicative inverse okay um, which is uh, 1 over 300 of course do the same thing to both sides do my cross cancellation and you can see what I end up with the same thing I ended up with before 18 over 100 equals P so therefore P is 18 percent okay this part B is um, going to present um, a different scenario okay and um, so let's take apart this uh, this problem and um, let's uncover what our holes and parts are or are, are, are in this problem they're going to be different than the first the first one so this one says Anna produced 32 bracelets of the 54 bracelets produced by Emily and Anna over the weekend okay so Emily and Anna are producing these over the weekend Anna produced 32 of those 54 okay compare the number of bracelets that Emily produced as a percent of those that Anna produced okay so this is um, needs to be looked at very very carefully okay um, and again it's a it's one that probably sh probably should have been preceded by um, a different one because um, this presents a bit of a quandary so I want you to go ahead and just take a look at that 
and come on back. Um, well, actually, let's just go ahead and do it together because um, I think this is different enough. But if you want to try it yourself, you could always could always pause. Okay. So here's the deal. So we have Anna produced 32. Okay. So Anna uh, equals she has 32 bracelets, and the the two of them, Anna plus Emily, was 54. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So 32 here, remember Anna, 54 here is Anna plus Emily. <clears throat> now, the statement, the last statement at the end in the question or the problem is what's going to be really important. It's going to make this a little bit different. So compare the number of bracelets that Emily produced as a percent of those that Anna produced. Okay? That is what makes this a little teeny, teeny, weeny bit different, okay? So first we need to know <clears throat> how many did Emily produce, because we don't know that yet. So all I have to do is, of course, 54 minus 32, okay, and that's uh, 22, all right? So Emily produced 22, all right? Now, if, the, um, if Anna produced 32, well, where does that number go in any equation? Well, that would go over here. Okay, 22 over 32, okay, because the number that Anna produced right here becomes what we would consider the whole in this case, okay, in this case, in this problem, because we are comparing one thing to those as a percent of those that Anna produced, okay. The 54 in this sense really has no, the only good 54 did for us is it helped us actually uh, come up with uh, Emily's total, okay? But 54 is not going to be used in any kind of, um, any kind of um, calculation right now, okay? The thing we have right now is we have um, 22 out of 32 or 22 of the 32, okay? This is our percentage, okay, 22, 30 seconds. Of course, not a pretty um, uh, looking fraction, okay, very difficult to get to, um, get from 32 to 100 because truly we would like to have, we would like to be able to do this, okay. We would like to know how we can get from 22, 30 seconds over to, um, to um, you know, x over a hundred. We're trying to find out what that that percentage is. Okay. So if we're going to figure this out arithmetically, and here is the shortcut, guys and girls. Um, I'm not sure if I've even talked about this yet, but of course we could just do this problem: 22 over 32, or 22 divided by 32. We could do that with a calculator. Okay, and if we did do that, we would get zero. Point six eight seven five, okay, zero point six eight seven five. Therefore, our percentage would be, of course, sixty eight point seventy five percent. Okay, sixty eight point seventy five percent. So what that number is doing, I'd love to ask you and just have you give me some suggestions around the class, but I can't. Um, well, that number, of course, this 68.75%, this compares Emily's total to Anna's total. So that means Emily produced 68.75% as many bracelets as Anna, okay? Which means, we can tell, she produced less, okay? It's obvious that she produced less because this number here would have to be actually um, more than 100% for her to have um, produced more. And actually, I'm probably getting ahead of myself because I just peeked at that letter C there, okay? Anyway, that's how we do it arithmetically. Let's go ahead and... Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and erase all this, and let's go ahead and do this um, using our percent formula, okay? So if we go ahead and use our percent formula, 
again, we have, and again, it's good to do the percent formula because it actually allows us to take this apart a little bit. Again, remember, it's quantity equals percent times whole, okay? And again, um, locating what that whole was or recognizing that whole, uh, very important, and we know that the whole was going to be those that Anna produced because that's what being, being, we're, being, we're comparing to, okay? So that was 32. Um, the percent, of course, we don't know, okay? And then the quantity, of course, was um, um, was uh, Emily's, which we figured out was 22, okay? So 22 equals P times 32, or, of course, 32P, all right? And then we go ahead and, and do our... Um, do our algebraic um, math, and uh, we'll get the answer. Okay, so we go ahead and do it. There we go, 32 over 1. P times 1 over 32, getting us down to 1P. So P equals 22 over 30. I'm sorry, that should not be 30. It should be 30. 32. Okay. And do the division there. 0 0.6875, just like last time, and we end up with 68.75%, okay? Both arithmetically and algebraically, um, you know, what you may be um, starting to come to uh, the conclusion that you know, doing things algebraically is a little bit more efficient, quicker, um, and hopefully that is what you're seeing and seeing the real value in algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one down here. Let's go ahead and write the number of bracelets that Anna produced as a percent of those that Emily produced, okay? So that's kind of what I was talking about before. Um, but let's go ahead and do that, use those same numbers, all right? And um, come on back after you uh, try to work it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together. Let's do this arithmetically first. So again, because this um, the problem is, is telling us that we are going to um, use as a percent of those that Emily produced. So once we see that, we know Emily's is going to be, her, hers are going to be um, considered or they're going to represent the whole in this situation, okay? Again, we've talked, we talked about this early, you know, the whole is relative. It's relative to what the problem tells you. It's relative to what's being asked, okay? So in this case, that whole is going to be what Emily produced. That's a 22, and we're going to compare Anna's numbers to Emily's. Therefore, uh, Anna's goes on top. Okay, that's our numerator in this case. Very simply, well, we can actually reduce that to 16 over 11. And then we do the, do the, um, let's just, well, let's, let's actually, let me go back to there. Let's do this one again. Let me pause here. You can see this becomes a repeating a decimal, non-terminating repeating decimal. Okay, 4545445. Four, five, four, five, four, five which, <clears throat> unfortunately, is going to make our our answer, because I've rounded here, um, it's going to make our answer um, less precise, okay? We can actually figure this out with um, fractionally, okay? There is a fractional portion of a percent here, but um, I'm not going to mess with that um, right now, okay? So um, this, of course... Um, is 145 percent, and we could always um, tell that because uh, we have. And first of all, we knew early on that this is going to be over 100 percent because our numerator was greater than our denominator. Okay, we knew we have 100 over 100 percent, and then of course we know that 1.45 is going to be over 100 percent because one represent one whole represents 100 percent already. Okay. And then we have another 45%, which is represented by the 4 or 5 here, 45 hundredths. Okay, so yes, we have 145%. That is the um, <clears throat> arithmetic method of doing that. And I just punched that into a, into a calculator. Okay, um, next we're going to go ahead and look at algebraically, and we're going to use our formula quantity equals percent times the whole. And again, just plugging in the correct. And again, I just, uh, you know, instead of P times 22, 22P. And again, you know we're going to be dividing here. And we're going to divide that 32 by 1 over 22, just like we're doing to the other side. And then we get P equals, again, 1.45.
or 145 percent and again not absolutely precise because we we rounded when our decimal began to repeat okay okay so these exercises one through four they are uh, intended to give us a little more practice with this um, there's a fluency exercise uh, we will do in class um, I won't give that to you here um, but I think um, doing um, these exercises will will uh, will help us um, become more clear in what we're doing. Okay, so here we go. There are 750 students in the 7th grade class. Okay, ooh, 7th grade class. And 625 students in the 8th grade class at Kent Middle School. Okay, what, per, what percent is the 7th grade class of the 8th grade class? Okay, so what percent does the 7th grade class represent of the 8th grade class at Kent Middle School. Go ahead and mull over that, see if you can put that together in the correct fashion, and uh, come on back. Alright, so here we go. Let's go ahead and um, do this. And again, we're talking about of the 8th grade class, therefore that is going to be our, um, our denominator. Okay, that's our whole. Okay, and then the 750 which is the, s the students in the seventh grade, because they are being compared to the whole. Okay, so they're on the top as a numerator. Very simple, do this division. Okay, um, 750 divided by 625 is 1.2, a nice neat number, um, instead of what we had before, 1.2, or 125%. And again, just like before, numerator is is greater than the denominator. We know it's going to be over 100%. Um, and we know right there because we have a hole already in that one. That's 100% already plus another 20% right there. Okay? Or, of course, 120%. All right? And again, we look at a number. Whenever your numerator is greater than your denominator, you know your, your uh, percentage is over 100%. Okay? All righty. And... Um, Let's go ahead and erase that. Actually, I should continue erasing that because I just added some more stuff. All right, and um, and let's go ahead, let it, go ahead and look at it arithmetic. I mean, I'm sorry, algebraically. And algebraically, it's going to be again quantity equals percent times the whole. Um, just boil it right down to 750 equals 625p, and uh, just run through those steps. It's pretty much the same thing we just did, okay? It ends up to be 750 divided by 625, 1.2, 1 and 2 tenths, or 120%. Now, you could also look at it this way if you wanted to look at it in terms of fractions, okay? Um, we have 750 over 625. Now, that can be reduced or simplified to 6 over 5, okay? Um, both of those numbers are divisible by 125. Again, you'd have to do that to, uh, to work it out a little bit to know that. Um, but that 6 over 5 is actually equal to 1 and 1 fifth. Okay, and that 1 um, right there, that 1 whole, of course, can be 100%. And now, if we, um, <clears throat> if we do remember, our um, 1 fifth is actually the same as 20 over 100, 20 hundredths. And therefore, 1 and 1 fifth is the same as... 120%. Okay, and I guess you can only get this answer correct if you actually got the answer above it correct, but it just asks you here, the principal will have to increase the number of 8th grade teachers next year if the 7th grade enrollment exceeds 110% of the current 8th grade enrollment. So, will she need to increase the number of teachers? Explain your reasoning. Um, well, you could probably figure that out since um, we know that the 7th grade represents 120% of the current 8th grade enrollment. I guess the answer would be yes. She will have to um, increase the number of teachers um, based on the fact that um, presently the 7th graders um, account for 120% of the 8th grade enrollment. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, moving on to the next problem, number two, it reads, at Kent Middle School, there are 104 students in the band, 
and 80 students in the choir. Okay, 104 and 80, which I can't highlight there very well. Um, what percent of the number of students in the choir is the number of students in the band? Okay, so what percent of the number of students in the choir is the number of students in the band? Okay, so again, be careful, read this carefully, and then um, complete it and come on back. Okay, well, hopefully this went well for you. Um, you know, just a little little practice. Hopefully you're, again, just putting the numbers in the correct place, identifying the whole, identifying the, the quantity or the part. Okay, so if we um, we look at it here, so the way to set it up, um, I just went and looked. I said it says, you know, what percent of what percent of the number of students in the choir? Starting with that, what percent of those students, okay, is the number of students in the band? Okay, therefore I went and put in, and chose that choir kids as being the um, the whole because we're comparing to them. Okay. Comparing to them, again, putting these numbers in the right place is uh, is really half the battle. Um, okay, then 104 is the number of bands as a numerator. And then, again, that equals actually 13 over 10. Um, I just looked and I, I saw you know that 8 um, went into 80 evenly, of course, so I went and tried to do that into 104, and very conveniently it went in 13 times. Okay, and didn't want to do that quite yet. I do that all the time. I just don't understand why that happens. What am I doing? Okay, um, let me see. Sorry. <clears throat> Where am I? Sorry, everybody. We did this already. Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay, and so there we go. So we have 13 over 10, which is 1 and 3 tenths which is, of course, 130%, okay? All right, so if I look at it over here and I use our um, the percent formula, 104 equals 80p, um, of course, because 80 is, our, is the whole we're talking about right here, and um, p, of course, stands for percent, which is what we're trying to solve for, and uh, 104 is our quantity, which we have, and um, very simply, we do the division again, 104 over 80, which is 130%. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and just get right into this uh, next one here. Um, at Kent Middle School, breakfast costs 125, 125, excuse me, breakfast costs $1.25, and lunch costs $3.75. What percent of the cost of lunch is the cost of breakfast. Okay, again, pay really close attention to how this is stated. Okay, the cost of lunch is the cost of breakfast. Put that together and come on back. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here's how um, I put this together. And again, what percent of the cost of lunch, okay, what percent of the cost of lunch um, is, is very well stated and very clear that that is what we are comparing to. Okay, therefore it becomes our denominator. It becomes the whole. Okay, and then of course $1.25 goes on top. So 1.25 over 3.75. Okay, and if we go ahead and do that, we could actually break that down. You might have noticed pretty early on that there are three 125s and 375s. <clears throat> Therefore, we have that equals 1 over 3. Again, a third, not very neat, very neat as a fraction, not very neat as either a decimal or a percentage. And of course, you know, um, 1 divided by 3 gives us the decimal 0 0.33333. Okay, repeating 3, okay? But when we talk about percentage, we always like to go... Um, two places over, okay, um, at least there, so talk about percentage, we'll have like 33.3%, or maybe even more correctly, 33 and a third percent, um, usually one third is usually expressed as 33 and one third percent.
percent. Okay, again, doing it with the uh, formula is 125 equals 375p, and again, it's just a matter of doing the division, and you do it, and you come up with the same, same thing. So, yes, um, the cost of breakfast, therefore, is 33 and one-third percent of the cost of lunch, okay, which means, and you can see right away, if someone told you that and didn't give you any of the numbers, um, you would know that the cost of breakfast is less than the cost of lunch. And um, and if you just did that comparison and you knew that's what you were comparing, um, you would know right away <clears throat> that if you got any number that was over 100%, it would be incorrect. Okay? All right. So here's our last one here. Um, well, I think it's the last, number four here. Um, it says, describe... The real world situation, okay, it's a little bit different now. Describe the real world situation that could be modeled using the equation 398.4 equals 0 0.83 times x. Describe how the elements of the equation correspond with the real world quantities in your problems. problem. Then solve your problem. Okay, well that seems to be a real curveball thrown out of left field. Um, all right, I'm going to pause right now and get my head around this problem. And you can mull it over and um, <clears throat> we can come, come back and we'll do it together. Okay, well I decided just to put this, this little equation right here into a, um, my quantity equals percent times whole. Uh, formula just to start. So again, because I wanted to, of course, just identify my my parts and holes or quantities and holes. So in this sense, three hundred ninety-eight point four. Okay, and um, you know in that zero point eight three looks a lot like a percentage, and actually in terms of a percentage, it is the same as eighty-three percent. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that zero point eight three in there. Um, and then put X next to it because that's our unknown. And that unknown is um, is the same as as the whole, okay? Because that's the whole is represented here by X, okay? And that might have been uh, pretty easy to see from the beginning. But anyway, <clears throat> so my little scenario, my little story here, situa real world situation, I wrote a water bottle has 398.4 milliliters left in it. If this represents 83% of what was in it at the start, what was the starting amount or the starting volume? Okay, so um, I have that here. I have 398.4, which is left, which would represent that quantity. Okay, and if this represents 83%, Okay, of what was in it at the start, which represents the whole, okay, because that would be what it had in it. Okay, so then it's just a matter of um, doing the math. You know it, okay, because all I do here is just multiply by the um, by the uh, additive inverse, I'm sorry, multiplicative inverse of 0.83. Um, and that's what I did to get that. And if I do the division on a calculator, I get 480. Nice, neat, even number. Um, and, of course, the answer to my problem would have been 480 milliliters. Now, you could have done several other things. Of course, you could have used dollars and cents. You could have said 300, uh, I paid 398.4, or $398.40 for a computer. Okay? If that, was, if that represented 83% of the computer's original cost, what was the original cost? Okay? Something like that. I'd be really, really curious to see what, what some of you uh, girls and boys put together. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and summarize here. Our lesson summary. Um, visual models or, or arithmetic models can be used to solve problems that compare quantities with percents. Okay, Equations can be used to solve percent problems using the basic equation, which we've changed up a little bit. Just took out the part and... Substituted that for quantity, so quantity equals percent times whole. Quantity in the new percent formula is the equivalent of part 
in the original percent formula, okay? So this has just replaced this, okay? So again, we have visual models, we have arithmetic models, we have algebraic models, which is this idea of, of the formulas or equations, okay? So lots of different ways to solve problems, checking our work um, with one, with work using the other strategy, also very helpful. Okay, hopefully this was um, enjoyable. It was for me, and uh, see you uh, in lesson five.